Father, Son, and Violin Chapter 7 Teacher Lee taught me how to be a good man as I learned to play the violin. By then I had my self-made violin, a nice used bow and the hand-copied homan. What else did I need apart from time and practice? In fact, I did have enough time and much practice, as at that time school was not so busy and to me, practice itself gave me the greatest pleasure and happiness. Every early morning I practiced my violin by the side of a garden pond close to home so as to avoid waking my neighbors. During the summer, Every afternoon my brothers went swimming with other kids and that was my chance to monopolize our home to practice. With the temperature rising to around 40 degrees in a not well-ventilated bungalow house, I was always showered by my own sweat. Though the temperature became much more friendly in the evening, I was forced to go outside to practice. Outside, the mosquito cluster was my major enemy, particularly when I played the A-string. The mosquitoes would attack me like the Japanese kamikaze pilots during World War II. Later, I found a favorite practice spot near a railway where there were fewer mosquitoes flocking. In those days, although I ate with my brothers at the same table and slept in the same room, my spirit lived in an entirely different world. I had almost no friends but many unfriendly neighbors. We quarreled from time to time for one reason and that reason alone, the strident noise out from that wooden box, endlessly, from morning till night. Due to this, few neighborhood kids talked to me, except one girl, the next door neighbor who Mimi. Back then my greatest grievance was that nobody recognized my genius. Now when I think back, I feel sorry and shameful for having caused so much headache to my neighbors with that dreadful violin sound. Forgive me, my poor neighbors. Now I apologize to you in front of the whole world. I took lessons with Teacher Lee once a week in the beginning. Later, I went to see him more and more often. After the lessons we always played some duets from the Method Homan. Gradually, violin lessons became art and enjoyment for both of us. This is how, within one year, my violin playing took a great leap forward. It gave me the confidence to compete with Ma or even Wang. The pity was, Ma was not interested in competing with me as she was a girl and more importantly, she was supposed to be my girlfriend, temporarily. Therefore, of my rivals, this left only one, Wang Shi. Speaking of Wang, for the sole purpose of chasing Lu Xiaobing, he transferred to our school. That resulted naturally, in adding one more violin to our Mao team. That is to say, the Mao team now had three violins, Ma, Wang, and me. As I mentioned previously, in the ballet, The White-Haired Woman, there was a violin solo passage that used to be played by Ma. But one day, just before the performance, Ma's face looked longer than usual. After questioning, I found it was Wang who requested to substitute her and play that solo paragraph himself. That fact gave me very confused feelings. What a guy. Not only did he take Lu away from me, but he also wanted to take the solo from Ma, or should I say my Xiao Mao. From that moment, I decided to contend with him for the solo. The performance started. When the dance got close to the violin solo passage, I saw Wang had stopped playing, constantly wiping his sweaty hand on his trousers getting himself ready to play the solo. When the time came, I could not help myself, I rushed to play the solo paragraph, half a beat earlier than the rhythm, causing trouble on the stage. 
The untimely violin solo confused Lou's steps and made her inclined body fall down on the stage. Fortunately, the people sitting in front of the stage were all Liberation Army soldiers, who most likely had the discipline not to laugh at any and all incidents. After the performance was over, Lou was circled by teammates in a corner backstage, receiving handkerchiefs as one after another was passed to her. I felt extremely lost, the only way to ease myself was by thinking of something else, such as How can a woman's eye store so much water? Wang looked at me with great disappointment, rebuking me in an undertone. You are not a good friend, so selfish and full of arbitrariness. I gave tit for tat. What? You say I'm selfish? That solo passage used to be Xiao Mao's, I mean teammate Mars. Why did you want to take it over? Why are you so furious about the violin solo thing? Whoever plays, it will not be your turn. Unexpectedly Chan Flute interjected, a remark full of vinegar, obviously because I called Ma, Xiao Mao. Wang Shi nodded his head echoing. So so so. I ignored Chan Flute and challenged Wang directly. Let's compete playing the solo passage or Homan, you name it. The winner will play the solo paragraph from now on. Ma heard that and quickly pulled me aside, whispering to me. To play Homan, he finished that a long time ago, now he practices Kaiser. Kaiser is a violin teaching method a step higher than Homan. Seeing me speechless, Ma comforted me. Why compete with him? I'm positive that you are going to be the number one violin player among the Changsha amateur violin players. Ma's action irritated Chan Flute, he rushed forward and pushed Ma away from me. Look at you two pull and drag. There should be a division between boys and girls. Ma's action irritated Chan Flute, he rushed forward and pushed Ma away from me. Look at you two pull and drag. There should be a division between boys and girls. How could that be tolerated? I acted like a little rascal and pushed Chan Flute against the wall. Wang was shocked, keeping his mouth half open he rumbled repeatedly. How can it be like this? Ma was on the side unable to help but laugh. Lou, however, walked towards us. Stop it, both of you. It was my fault. I didn't follow the music closely enough. I'll be more careful from now on. At that moment teacher Lau and the workers' representative Chuan came to inform us that the noodles were ready. Seeing us entangled together, it was inevitable to be questioned and judged. When they found our key problem was the violin solo, Lao expressed his opinion. From now on, you three take turns playing the solo. Is it worth quarreling over such a trifle? Representative Chuan, on the other hand, had a totally different idea about the issue. He suggested, Why does the solo have to be played by one person? Bad individualism. From now on, you three comrades play the solo together. More people, bigger strength. Good. This matter is settled. Go, 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 comrades, let's go eat. A solo is a solo, how can three play a solo together? Art has its own rule and form. Teacher Lao said, opposing Representative Chuan publicly, which was the first for any of us to see. What rule? Art obeys publicizing Mao's thoughts, you obey me and we working class lead everything. That is the law above all. After Chuan showed his absolute authority as a working class, he again urged us. Let's go eat quickly everybody. As Mao said, good health is the capital of revolution. During the whole night's meal, teacher Lao was constantly explaining that the solo must not be played by three. He even told Chuan that the solo passage in the ballet 
white-haired woman was an imitation of Tchaikovsky's magnum opus from the ballet, Swan Lake. It was classical literature that could not be and should not be changed. Representative Chuan nodded his head showing he was listening while he was busy working on his noodles. After he finished the noodles he drank all the soup left in the bowl, then he put the chopsticks on the empty bowl looking at Teacher Lao and sighed with regret, profoundly. The noodle today was a little lacking in oil. The very next day, I went to see Teacher Lao at his home. First, I showed my regret for taking over the solo passage, soon after that I asked, about the Swan Lake you mentioned yesterday, could you also let me criticize it? That's what you come here for, isn't it? Lao smiled and continued. I don't think I have the Swan Lake tape here, but you can find that solo passage in the movie Lenin in 1918. Seeing me looking greatly disappointed, Lao added. I happen to have a few classical music records, in them there are a few fascinating violin solos. The problem is, the school phonograph is at the moment in the hands of the workers' propaganda team at the broadcasting room. My violin teacher Lee has a gramophone. Please lend the records to me at once. I begged anxiously. That's too risky. How can a teacher lend a four-olds to a student? That's simply too risky. Lao looked truly worried. After entangling him over and over again, and more importantly convincing him of the complete safety of teacher Lee's place and my promise of this being kept an absolute secret, Lao responded. As I said, those things cannot be lent. However, it would be a different story if you picked them up from the trash. Lao carefully wrapped the records with a few used newspapers, and then wrote, Cultural Trash, on it. Together, the records were placed with all other music tapes. Staring at that pile of, Cultural Trash, Lao groaned. What a pity. When I was so pleased to pick up the records and about to walk away, Lao warned me again, just in case someone sees, say you picked them up from my trash. Don't bring trouble to others, understand. I opened the package as soon as I got out of Lao's home. The records were not something else, but my most favorite, Spanish Fantasy by Rimsky-Korsakov. I hurried myself straight to teacher Lee's home right away with the records and excitement. When I got to Lee's home, he was in bed. He slowly got up and said, Just a little headache, not bad enough to remain in bed. We immediately enjoyed the music, Spanish fantasy.
immediately woke me up from that inebriating musical dreamland and gave me an introduction to the composer, Rimsky Korsakov, who used to serve in the Navy. He was an amateur musician without having studied composition systematically. Because of his outstanding gift, he was invited to be the director of the St. Petersburg Music Conservatory. Being a director, he, however, appeared in classrooms with some first grade students to study harmony and other music theories. I was amazed by Lee's story, as always. Also, as always, I thought Lee was randomly telling a story, a story only. But this time, Lee went on with his story. He said to me in a very sincere tone. Therefore we should always be modest and prudent, always think of learning from others, even when we become a real master of violin playing. I started to realize that Wang Shi had talked about the solo issue to teacher Lee. To avoid more criticism, I admitted. All right, all right, I was wrong. I promise that will not happen again. Being educated by Lee, quite a few times I wanted to say hello to Wang, but after all, I could not put down my face. I guess Wang felt the same. During the Mao team's performance, every time it got close to the solo passage, Wang put the violin down, as did Ma, leaving me no choice but to play the solo section. On the surface I was the winner of the solo conflict, however, since then, Lu stopped asking me to look after a school bag. The successor was no one other than Wang Shi. One day I caught a chance to show my warm temperature to Lu, but in return I received a few cold words. I'd rather you blow your bamboo flute. Was exactly what she said to me. I finally made up my mind to reconcile with Wang. I waited outside the rehearsal hall. When I saw him come out I intentionally bumped straight into him, my head colliding with his chest. Immediately I apologized. He, however, repeatedly said. Never mind. Painful? I asked. Very painful. Wang covered his chest with a hand, quickly explaining. Pain not caused by you, but from a heart broken. Wang suddenly looked awful. Hey, don't you scare me. I was truly a little scared. At the right moment, Lu walked out of the rehearsal hall. Wang fell toward me and whispered. Say I'm dying. I embraced Wang and loudly shouted to Lu. I'm dying. No, I mean he's dying. Please help me, I mean, him. Can you imagine? The most sympathetic and kind-hearted Lu Xiaobing laughed at us, saying coldly to me. Ask him if he wishes to be buried or burnt. You, how can you be so heartless, he is not dead yet. I yelled at Lu. No, not dead yet, not in one hundred years. Lu laughed. Waiting until Lu disappeared, Wang stretched his arms twice and soliloquized. Again, a fruitless effort. Then he shook hands with me very exuberantly to express our reconciliation and walked away whistling a tune. Hey, you still mad at me? I confirmed. How could I be? On the contrary, very grateful. Wang said cordially. I believe what he said was true. Because if it were not for me taking over his violin solo, how would he have gotten the chance to look after Lu's school bag? <laughs>